Okay, so this is basically my first go outside with this Sony AX53 and also my Sennheiser ME64 cardioid mic as well, which I've got just mounted on top of it. Um, now, the thing is, the reason why I've ended up going for this camera is because I had a couple of options to go, you know, what to go for. And I do like action cameras and I do like just small cameras in general for getting out and doing, um, you know, like very lightweight kit kind of things or very lightweight setups you know basically stuff that you can throw in your pockets and get outdoors and do it so basically what it was i was looking at the gopro hero 7 um and you know i've kind of read too many negative things about it so far maybe it's going to get better with future firmware updates i don't know and um, the thing with that it's obviously got the most amazing electronic image stabilizers that's the biggest thing it's got going for it but unfortunately in order to do stuff like this vloggy type stuff or indeed if i was going to you know have a little lightweight setup for going out and like interviewing people and such the problem is you've still got to put an audio interface on it um you've still got to put a pistol grip on it and then you've also got to like mount mics on it and stuff like that so in the end it does become a little bit bulky um you know for, for what it is which is a small camera basically and then by the time you put all the other bits on to make it useful um, it does bulk it up a little bit and then the other option that i had as well was to go for the uh, the dji osmo pocket now again you know that's got some great plus points but at the moment uh, th this is the end of january 2019 they still haven't released the audio adapter for it so you can't plug external mics into it right now and then once it gets to that point where you can do that, you're going to have to have some kind of a mounting system for the pocket to put it onto a rig or a grip and then add mics to it and stuff. Once again, bulking the size up and whatnot. But I think the worst thing that I've seen with it is all the footage always looks jerky on it. And that's because it's just, you know, very, very high shutter speeds to compensate for light with it. Uh, you can get around that obviously with um, you know NDs and such, but just off bat, I don't know. Um, also, it doesn't have a very wide field of view either. So, like, I'm at full arms length here with this camera, and from what I've seen of the pocket, this is actually a wider field of view. So, yeah, you know, there's that to also think about as well. Yeah. So, with the two main other options being the pocket and the GoPro Seven, it kind of like I start to think, well, do you know what? By the time we've bulked either one of them up and by the time we've got around some of the things which I don't particularly like about them, such as field of view on one, battery and colour issues on the other, I just thought, well, do you know what? I might as well go for another camcorder as well. Something that's capable of 4K and stuff as well if I need it. But probably more importantly, something that's got a really good image stabiliser on. And I think out of all the small camcorders, this one is probably the one that's got the best thing on it because it's like got the optical image stabilizer which also then has the option to then have an electronic one added on top of that as well and on the point of stabilization right now because i'm in 1080p mode on this camera i can go to intelligent active and basically what that does it combines the optical stabilizer with a, like an intelligent eis as well because what it does in 1080p mode it just uses a bit more of that sensor to be able to kind of blow in a bit more as well so you kind of get like the added benefits of two types of stabilization for doing this and I'm, I'm just looking at the monitor right now and i've got to say this is like quite possibly the best stabilizing that i've seen on cameras similar to this i don't think i've seen anything better than this to be honest um obviously the eis on the gopro 7 is amazing and uh, and the pocket also obviously has a uh, well basically it's a gimbal <laughs> built into a camera so yeah as far as them two things are concerned they're great but for this type of camera i don't think i've seen any better than this before now another plus point with this camera as well which is a little bit of a contradiction to the way that i would normally shoot is that it lends itself to be uh, to being handled in auto mode very well 
Um, so, you know, mostly I'd be shooting manual, but then that's when I'm behind, you know, the back end of the camera and not in front of it. But the thing is, when you get in front of any camera, if you're just like, you know, controlling it on your own, it's very difficult to do all of it manual. And it's probably near enough impossible to do it if you're mobile constantly, like running and gunning with it with you in front and like, you know, moving around and like dipping in and out of various light conditions and stuff like that and stuff as far as focus is concerned as well so yeah i think it's auto mode it kind of really does lend itself to to like being a, a really good vlogging camera um i mean right now as well this field of view that i've got here that's me full arms length away there because what i've done because i've just set it down on a small little tiny tripod thing on on top of this wall um i've took all the stabilizing off and everything so this is how wide it is a full arms length so i think this is actually quite wide for a camcorder I'm, I'm really quite surprised by it i think it's great also on the point of its automatic control there are certain amounts of manual control you've got with this camera as well so as a for instance earlier on when i was kind of like walking up earlier in the park i had the shutter set to 50 and also i dialed in a bit of white balance on it as well but the thing is you know that's that's all well and good when you, you kind of like you're a bit more relaxed shall we say and you're kind of just in one position but i think once you get beyond that and you start you know moving the camera about a fair bit and stuff like that you really do have to go fully auto i mean because what i've done right now i've put it into fully auto so the shutters on auto white balance is auto everything and all i've done was just literally touched the screen on the point that i wanted to like focus and expose which is obviously me in front of it and it just works straight away you know i think it's great for this type of stuff anyway yes that was just another point on this auto control function for the camera okay so just for the end summary bit now and what it is i'm indoors and i'm a couple of weeks down the line because what it is i've just come to edit the piece and i realized i've lost the end clip that i did when i was out in the park uh, so basically what it is i'm just going to do this bit indoors and try just a couple of quick other things one i'm using an external condenser microphone in this instance it's the rode nt1a and this is from my friend hutchie <laughs> and then also i'm I'm testing for like low light conditions as well now what it is i've kind of like i've let it find the white balance by doing like it's also white balance for like this particular setup here you can't dial in the white balance but it does a really good job when you kind of do like the auto select for white balance as opposed to picking like you know the preset color temperatures for indoors and outdoors and whatnot let's see i've kind of dialed in something roughly for focus and also hopefully that is anyway and also there's a, a little bit of exposure control that i've done now the picture that i'm looking at on the uh, on the screen looks good okay so basically i'm just going to try and summarize as fast as possible now what it is like i was been talking about all the way through this video it was i was at a point where i needed to make a decision over a new smallish camera um preferably i wanted a gopro type camera or possibly the pocket but you know i, I give it a lot of thought and i just thought to myself do you know what I love GoPros for certain things, and they're well capable of doing, um, you know, really good kind of audio, and like they're really good at being like kind of very spontaneous as well. But the thing with them, though, in order to get decent audio, you've got to bulk them up a bit. So you're going to have to put a pistol grip on. You're going to have to put a case on. You're going to have to get the external microphone adapter. Then you've got to attach your microphone. And then by the time you've done all that, you know, you're talking of something that's like, you know, it, it, it's got a bit of like height to it. Maybe not as deep, obviously, as a AX53, but it's definitely going to be taller in the long run. And then I've looked at, you know, some, well, very recently, a lot more people are bulking out the osmo uh, sorry the osmo pocket that is and what i've noticed there is like there's a lot of people using like quite quite big heavy kind of like you know grip systems with tripods on and then the extra grip for the for the osmo and then also using the side grip for a phone and and by the time you know again people have bulked that up it's gonna be bigger and taller than what this camera is now obviously granted i'd still have to put the pistol grip on the camera but the things with the microphones and the microphone input the camera is amazing at it and hopefully we're hearing 
something here with an NT1A plugged into it. And basically, you know, you'd attach it to the cold shoe, the camp world, well, when you're using like a proper microphone for doing outdoor stuff and that, or you can do an underslung variation on the pistol grip. So realistically, I started getting to thinking, well, for my particular use, because obviously, I, I, you know, I lay in a lot as well with audio as well as the picture quality. So for me, a Pocket or a GoPro 7 would have ended up being quite big. And when, when I go out, I'd have to kind of bolt it together. None of which is a problem. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely no way it's a problem for the Pocket or the GoPro 7. But then I started thinking, well... You know, by the time I do that, maybe an AX53 is going to be the better choice for me. And the reason for that is, is because there's a number of issues still with the GoPro 7 and the Pocket. GoPro 7, there's still issues as far as I'm concerned with the, its exposure and its skin tones and such. Obviously, then you hear people going on about battery issues and the likes and whatnot. And then on top of that, although what I will say though, you know, how magic is the EIS on the GoPro 7? It is absolutely, it's, it's out of this world, it's amazing. Now, you know, if, if I had more money than cents, um, I'd probably get one anyway just because of the EIS because it's absolutely outstanding. Although that said, if you want to do action stuff, pure action stuff, you know, you look no further than the GoPro 7. It is the pinnacle of action cameras. But obviously, I'm using these cameras for doing, you know, dialogue, vloggy, interview type stuff. So I've got to be a bit more careful than just looking at it as an action camera. And then you get to the Osmo Pocket. And again, it's a fantastic camera in principle. I've seen issues with it as far as focus is concerned and such. And for such a small camera as well, I don't even know whether that was the right decision to have a focus system on a, such a small camera. Um, you can't, you, you know, to get focus assist, you'll have to use a phone to do that. So once again, you're bulking it up. And then if you're trusting it to do its own focus, I've seen a lot of that stuff where people are standing in front of it and it's not in focus. Um, we're now into the second week of February and the adapter still isn't released for the microphone as well or the microphone adapter so again issues with both of them um, i mean i've got to be dead honest if dji had have had all the peripherals available for the pocket when it was released there's a fair chance i just would have went straight for it because of the external microphone uh, or the ability to plug an external microphone in but again once you kind of weigh all these things up for me personally, for what I have in mind to use a camera for, which is like semi-portable in the case of the 53. Although that said, it's not necessarily semi-portable, again, by the time you bulk up an action cam or a pocket. So yeah, for me personally, the, uh, the, the, what's in the 53 come out way on top because it ticked a lot more boxes. And right now, the, the condition that I'm in here it, this is low low mixed light. Now, I've had the GoPro 5 and 6, and I know for a fact that they wouldn't produce as good a picture as what this is in this particular lighting scenario. Um, the Pocket, I don't know because I've never used one, but I doubt very much it's going to look better than this for the, like for light, light and stuff like sensitivity to the available light and whatnot. Um, yeah, so I think in the long run, the 53 is probably the best thing I could get right now, specifically for something that's small enough to be pocketable. And when I did the stuff outside, what it was, the camera was in one pocket. Granted, it was a jacket. It wasn't me jeans, obviously. But, you know, pocket and then pistol grip in the other pocket. Boom, put it together. And I had the microphone. Also, there's small microphone options as well, which become very pocketable for something like this. Obviously, as well as, like, you know, the, uh, the Osmo Pocket and also the GoPro 7. You've got a ton of options for them as well. But the advantage to this camera is that it is a proper camcorder. Now, its stabilizer, I think, is brilliant for what it is, and it's the only camera of its size, proper camcorder, that is, that has a, you know, that type of stabilization, which, and it is the best. It is not as good as a GoPro 7 for EIS, and it is definitely not a gimbal like the Pocket. So, yeah, you know, they win outright with that, quite obviously. But, you know, 
The plus point for this camera, you know, it is a camcorder. It's got the mic input, which sounds brilliant. And hopefully, I'm hearing that now with this NT1A. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to have to kind of wrap this up because I did the other stuff outside, and I thought I did that quite snappy as well. So I don't want to kind of, like, overstay my welcome here. So basically, this is the second of, like, two sort of prelims that I will, will have put on my main channel. I will have done other videos with this, but they're going to be on my test channel. So the idea is now I've done well enough like tests with this camera to know what it can and it can't do for my particular uses so from here on in over the next month or so i'm probably going to do three or four very specific short videos about the 53 you know maybe something which is like say just microphones so what i'll do i'll probably try you know some kind of condensers i'll try some lavaliers a radio system and stuff like that so i'll do a video just about microphones with the 53 maybe i'll do one just just about stabilization and then i'll do another one very specifically about it's uh, like it's auto setup and stuff a very quick outdoor vlog and and things like that yeah so that's probably the bottom line anyways to where i'm up to with this 53 and um yeah actually very very last thing i promise now um quite often you know, you, you buy something and then like, you know, five minutes later, you, you kind of get buyer's remorse and you're like, oh, I've bought the right thing. This 53 has got to be one of the best things. In fact, it's the best thing I've bought since the AX100. That's how good the 53 is. Anyways, yeah, I'm going to shut up and stop rambling. So hopefully this prelim has been useful to people. And if so, please call back as well, you know, and check out the other videos that I'm going to do about the 53 because it's a fantastic camera. And as per the title, yes, this is a very relevant camera for 19... Where am I? 2019. <laughs> anyway... I've been David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.